Hey guys, time to discuss the team of the week for Hockey Ultimate Team in NHL 20. And we got a few heavy duty guys to go over. I'm going to highlight some of the better cards, not specifically just by their rating, but things that I think that might be interesting, whether it be synergies, specific uh, attributes, and things like that, and cards to avoid, obviously, as we go along. So first, we've got the 85 Max Patch already. Uh, he is an 85 overall, good speed over 90, has the NP synergy, which uh, isn't terrible. I mean, uh, he's got three ba plus three to balance, hand-eye, strength, and offensive awareness. So if he is activate that, you've got someone with 94 balance, which is very good, especially considering his size. His shot, also very good at around 85 overall. As a left winger, he hits all the things that you need, someone quick with a good wrist shot. Uh, the one thing I do want to point out, though, is his defensive awareness. So stick checking and shot blocking and things like that. Defensive awareness and the awareness stats in general are modifiers. So it controls the higher the modifier, obviously, then the higher that the stats will actually work. I'm going to get specific numbers and things like that um, from, from some of the developers and whatnot and, and clear that up. But that's how at least I'm... Um, I understand it from what they've said to me. It is a modifier. So with defensive awareness being so low, it does kind of lower off his defensive stats or at least caps them from being as high as they are or as good as they are. Offensive awareness, obviously, with the NP synergy, does get increased, so he would be at an 87 offensive awareness, which is fantastic. So he would be a good card uh, to grab. Again, I'm an advocate for not going after and chasing the brand new Team of the Week cards because, well, um, they all will always go down in price. I know there is a few champions that have been in my comment section lately that will state, don't sell these cards immediately. Um, it's just, there are a few that, uh, that will hold their value. Um, but prime time specifically, they do, um, they are rare, but team of the weeks aren't, you can pack them the entire week and, uh, they will go down in price as more hit the market and better cards come out as well as this is the cap of their you know, for the month. So if October, if it happens again, Max Patcher already gets another 85. Well, he's not going to increase anymore, so he's just in packs again. Next up, we've got the 89, Sidney Crosby. This is obviously the crown jewel of this team of the week. 89 overall with the SP Synergy, which obviously is kind of the best team synergy. Plus three to speed, passing, puck control, and durability. So it would make him a 95 overall speed with 94 overall passing and puck control boosted to a 94 as well. Uh, this card's fantastic, obviously. You're going to have to pay up, though, if you do get him. He's going for about 550 right now. That's at launch of Team of the Week. Throughout the week, as it goes on, it's going to be a little bit cheaper, or obviously get down a little bit cheaper. Um, I don't know a price that I would feel comfortable grabbing him. I always find that the Sidney Crosby cards don't play nearly as good as they should. Um, it's a card I've never been able to truly get going, and I don't know if it's because most of my scoring doesn't come from centers, it comes from wingers, and that might determine that might be determined based on your play style. But obviously with 95 faceoffs, he's one of the best cards in the game currently with his speed shot and faceoff combination. Uh, I, but I wouldn't, I'd be careful with how much you spend. Cause even if you're spending 400, you're close to the amount of money that it would cost to get Taves or the master set Taves or Joel Lunkfist or one of the defensemen. Um, and you don't really want to waste that because those cards are a little bit better. So, um, just be mindful of that. If he drops like 300 in the next week or so, then I might pull the trigger. Then we've got Patrick Line. Interesting card. Line is always kind of polarizing um, just because he is so big and he does shoot right. There are lesser right-handed cards than lefties, so um, that is make him a little bit more rare. does have the X-Factor synergy, so he gets two to speed, agility, slap shot, and wrist shot power, making his speed a 92 and his... Excuse me, and his agility up to a 92. Sorry, and his speed up to a 93, agility up to a 92. So you would need X Factor to make him to get the full use out of him. Um, again, he is very big. So if you prefer um, that slower style, that kind of um, offensive forecheck where you use big, big players, 
um, then he's definitely one of the cards you want to go after. If you like to run and gun and fly down the ice in straight line, you might want to check out another winger that has a little bit more speed um, and maybe a little bit smaller again because he is so big. His defensive awareness also very low at 79 overall, so he's going to be a defensive liability in terms of other cards. I mean, his shot blocking is a 70, but his stick checking is only an 81, so he might not be able to knock the puck off as successful when you're playing defense with him. A body checking only a 79 as well, but does have that big, um, you know, that big size. So that uh, is a good advantage for him. Now, he's going to be expensive just because it's Patrick Line. But again, if you are one of the players that uses the big, big players um, and can get X Factor activated, this card's definitely worth it. Around 120K, that would be the most because around that price. Um, you could get someone a lot faster. Like 120k, you're looking at the same price as Base McDavid, and I would rather have Base McDavid. So just and it, again, that's a lefty, but that's the kind of example. I'm just saying that there are cards that are a lot better based on um, stats. Next up is the 87 Leon Drysaddle. It's unfortunate, but until a master set Leon Drysaddle comes out, these cards are pretty much useless. And uh, let me explain why. All of his, his, his speed, still pretty slow at 89 and under, okay? So that's one knock. He's 6'2", 215, means that he's going to play a little bit more sluggish. That, that endurance, that 79 endurance, people overlook that stat way too much. If you complain about guys that are faster, or you say you have uh, Howie Morenz or um, uh, Joel Lungfist, the Taves, the, 90, the, you know, the high 90 speed guys, and you're getting blown by by someone slower. The reason isn't because EA wants to, you know, mess with you. It's more than likely because they've been out for a while and their endurance is lower. Now, obviously, those 90 Master Set cards are a bad example. But if you have, you know, some lesser cards and their endurance is slow, a good thing to check and see if you're getting blown by consistently is if his endurance is slow. So he already has slow speed, meaning that he's going to run out of his already mediocre speed faster because of his endurance. So because he plays, um, you can play him, um, obviously, at center. That's where you'd want to play him because he is slow. Does have a good shot, though. It's just someone I would avoid. Um, that that 79 endurance is a really big thing, and I don't think nearly enough people understand it. I would avoid this card, sell him immediately for all the coins that you can get, and pick up someone who is a little bit better. Other than that, all of his other stats are fantastic for an 87. It's just, it really does a hindrance to him. Next, we've got the 88 Brad Marchand. Does for see now for wingers in my play style again? Um, one of my videos upcoming is going to be all about play styles and the cards that fit that style. Um, I do not like playing slow, I like going straight line, I like going up the boards quick, I like making one deke and then flying. And the most important stat for my wingers is speed and then wrist shot. Now, he does have a good wrist shot at 90 accuracy, 85 power, and does have the WC. Excuse me, the WC synergy. So he's got wrecking crew. So three acceleration, which is already pretty high at 90, up to a 93, and then body checking and strength up again at uh, at another three. So you know he's going to be a very good card that can hit, but he is smaller. So that is good. It does make up for his small size. I just would like a little. The the price you're going to pay is probably quite a bit. Now his defensive stats are very good. But if you're going to buy a forward that doesn't have elite speed, and by elite I mean high 90s and maybe a little bit bigger, um, there are, I think, better options. But the thing that does make up for that size is his body checking and strength being quite high as well as his defense and offensive awareness. It's a very good card. Um, It's just if you're going to spend the amount of money that it's going to cost to get him, there might be better options. And then lastly, among the first two lines, we've got the 86, Mark Shifley. Again, another right-handed defenseman with the arm day synergy, which means he gets plus two to slap shot power, strength, body checking, and defensive awareness. So his slap shot power boosted to an 88, and his strength all the way up to an 84. And body checking as well would go up to an 82. Um, the defensive awareness, again, would also increase again by another two, which would put him at 86. So a very well-rounded card. Again, same kind of thing as Line A, 6'3", 207, so a big boy, right-handed. 
A little bit faster, uh, but a little bit less wrist shot accuracy. This card does have good balance at 90 overall. Um, and again, being so big, if you are on PlayStation or Xbox, PlayStation specifically, though, with a big card like this, you're really not going to lose the puck, especially with the high puck control stat at 87 overall. This would be a very good card to work the corners. Again, I wouldn't really recommend it for someone who plays like me, that fast style on the wings. I like to break out and send my wingers. But if you do... Um, needs someone who's a little bit slower and, you know, doesn't lose the puck. It's all puck control, TOA. The guys that control TOA, those are the ones where you'd want to look at Mark Shifley. His faceoffs only being 81 kind of cap him, so you're not going to be able to play him at center. But because he is a righty, again, higher and right-handed cards are kind of um, a little bit more lesser known because... There just are a lot more left-handed players. And then after that, we've got the Europeans, Kastner, Stromberg, Marcus Nielsen, Jer Gregory Hoffman, Simono, and Hablin. Now, um, unfortunately, you're just not going to ever use these unless there's a restricted comp. On to defense. We've got the 84 Chris Letang. Uh, this would be an avoid. Um, again, right defensemen specifically are significantly more rare than any other position and uh, style of card in the game. There just is not a lot of good right-handed cards. I have what I would consider the three best in base 85 overall, Eric Carlson, the classic P.K. Subban, who is an 86, and then Team of the Week Tyson Berry from a few weeks ago. Now, that last one with Tyson Berry can be interchanged a little bit. But this Chris Letang, there are very sorry, there are very few right-handed defensemen that combined shot and speed. And because you can't put forwards on defense this year, it's really hindering that position. You can't, it's not a strength at all. It's a very weak position. And that's if you have the top end best cards. Um, but if you have a used free-to-play team, things like that, you're you're looking at it much less. So you're gonna have to invest, I think, in Chris Letang quite a bit of money just because he is right-handed. Does have the BM uh synergy. Um, so, obviously, he does have the Breakout Master, which does come through to Acceleration and 3 to Wrist Shot Power. Wrist Shot Power, kind of useless from a defenseman standpoint, and Acceleration is good, bumps it up to a 94, which is good as well. Passing's good, puck control's good, balance and endurance are good. Um, the thing, the one thing I would note, note that his strength is kind of low, so he might get body off the puck a little bit, although his puck control is very good when you're, you're, doing, you're holding a deke out. Um, stick checking is good as well as his awarenesses are good as well. But that accuracy is too rough for me to invest the amount of coins you're probably going to want to spend. Like, I would much rather have the 85 base Eric Carlson um, that are a lot more common than obviously Team of the Week cards than this one just because of you, you're able to get it somewhere near the net. And I think that you can do better than this uh, Chris Letang. Although right-handed defensemen are insanely rare. Good news is we got another righty in John Carlson, and this card's a little bit better, and the reason is is because he's six foot three, two eighteen. Again, not very many good right defensemen, and especially very big ones. So he's right-handed. Good speed at 90 overall. Does come with the TN synergy, so he gets plus three to slap shot accuracy, wrist shot accuracy, and passing. So his passing goes to a 90, and his slap shot accuracy goes up to an 80. So Perfect. If you can activate that synergy, you've now got a big defenseman with decent speed and a good shot from the point. Checks off all the things that you want in a defenseman. So in my opinion, I think he might be a little bit better than um, Tyson Berry or the 86 PK Subban because that PK Subban does have kind of a weak shot. But with John Carlson being so big, with his stick checking being an 85, very, very good defender, he would be someone I might invest in um, very shortly, to be honest with you. Then we've got Drew Doughty, who I cannot stand, but he already has an 86 overall, so he might be a little bit lower in price because his prime time's already out there. So um, just watch for that. If you can get him a little bit cheaper, he is still a very good defenseman, um, in my opinion. He's better statted than John Carlson. Um, but is a little bit s smaller with the RS synergy. So he's got plus three to body checking, endurance, discipline, and durability. So discipline and durability, kind of pointless, but endurance and body checking, he's got almost no he's got 97 endurance and body checking's up over an 82. So that does help out with his defensive stats. And then his defensive awareness is almost 90 as well. So he's going to be very good in that category. His speed is elite for right-handed defensemen, and his slap shot is 
good enough. The accuracy is under 80, but power is at 85. He would be one of the better right-handed defensemen. I'm probably going to either get him or John Carlson, depending on the price point. But if you do see a Drew Doughty for 115, 130K, might be a little much. Under 100, I would 100% buy. Then we've got Roman Yossi, six foot one, left-handed defenseman with thread the needle, so that slap shot accuracy, wrist shot accuracy, and passing. Slap shot accuracy is now an 80, so technically he's got a better shot than Drew Doughty. Passing up to an 89, and then 90, right around 90 speed, so that is good. Defensive awareness is an 88. Um, good card, but there, while right defense lacks a ton, um, currently left defense is a lot more plentiful. Um, there are, I think, better options. I think that Boreas Salming might be a little bit better if you're looking for that kind of card. Um, and the elite defenseman, I think, that you want to go after if you're saving coins and you're building up a team. I would really try and get that Lassie Kukkonen, who, in my opinion, is one of the best cards in the game, the master set left defenseman. Um, I would rather save up my coins to go all in on him as opposed to maybe packing Yossi and trying to use him. I would probably sell Yossi and try to get him. Just my opinion on that. And then Christian Jews, who... Does have good speed, shots, rough, and um, free-to-play card, maybe. Um, but does have good speed for a left defenseman, so that is something. And then in net, we've got the 83, Connor Hellebuck. Good size, so you could easily use him. Does have the 1T synergy, which is you know a great synergy to have. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't spend a ton on him, just because I think there are still better options. Uh, but at 6'4", you can't go wrong. So, uh, yeah. That'll do it, guys, for the Team of the Week. Let me know what you think of this week's Team of the Week and what you're going after, what you've seen as far as prices and things like that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Again, subscribe if you do enjoy the content, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one, boys.